Zera Group presents Biri Birgun. Assalamu alaikum Erenler and those who have seen Erenler and even those who know that there is more to Erenler than meets the eye. Whoops! Why did I say such a thing right at the beginning of Biribirgun? And what does it mean that there is more to Erenler than meets the eye? This is our subject today. It is narrated that one day on a Friday, Khaydr alayhi salam went to a mosque and sat down. Next to him is a member of the congregation. The man got a light head and fell asleep. When he fell asleep, Khidr alayhi salam nudged him so that he would hear the khutbah and his prayer would not be invalidated. Is the prayer invalidated when you sleep? We should be respectful to the khutbah. What does that mean? The khutbah is also a part of the Friday prayer. I mean, while the Imam is delivering the khutbah, we shouldn't check our Instagram, Twitter, etc. I know you won't, but some people do. Being busy with something else during khutbah is not good. Or some people talk to their friend next to them, chatting. That is not good either. Actually, when someone near you is talking during the khutbah, it is not good to even warn them to be quiet. Don't do that either. What will we do? With a gesture like this, shh, and so on. And of course, another thing, some people even don't see who is talking next to them and who is not. You know, like the story of Majnoon and Layla. Did I tell you that? Majnoon was walking in the desert and an old man was performing prayer. He said, Allahu Akbar and started prayer. Majnoon absentmindedly passed in front of the old man. After finishing the prayer, the man said, what are you doing? You nullified my prayer. Majnoon looked at the man's face. He said, brother, I'm drunk with Layla's love. I have neither seen you nor noticed that you were praying. You were in the presence of Allah. How did you see me? If you have seen me, what kind of a prayer is this? So when we look like this, it means if you hear the person talking next to you on Friday, it means that you are not fully engaged in the khutbah. This is another issue. Anyway, Khidr alayhi salam nudged him like this. The man opened one eye, someone next to him. A while later, once again, his head down. Khidr alayhi salam, as the story goes, nudged him again to wake him. Then the man fell asleep once again. When nudged for the third time, the man said, stop it or I'll tell people that you are Khidr and you won't be able to leave the mosque. Khidr alayhi salam was so surprised. He asked, oh Allah, Khidr did not recognize the man, but the man recognized Khidr. Who is this? It is narrated that Allah the Almighty said, you have the names of those who love us. That's how you can recognize them. How will you know who our loved ones are? Look, years ago when I was in Ankara, I would sit in the courtyard of Haji Bayram Veli Mosque. I mentioned it in one of the previous episodes. Brother Bako, when we were talking about the Madzubs, do you remember Brother Bako? Mine, 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 no mine, that Bako. I went there one day, I sat down, I was troubled. I had this issue on my mind. They say we need to get rid of the will. To get rid of the will, you know, don't wish for something, don't be stubborn if it happens, you shouldn't want anything. They have refined it so much that even not wanting is wanting. You have to get rid of that too. They say it won't be complete if you don't get rid of it too. I say, but how will we get rid of the will? I am obsessed with this. I spend my days and nights on this and I have a second issue. You know, it is said, mind is for the unwise. But those who have a mind should prefer love and attain salvation. But I say, how does one abandon or get rid of mind? Will is one, mind is two. These are my issues. I went to Haji Uwa's place one afternoon. I sat at a table. I'm alone, my issue and me. Actually, I'm not alone. I'm sitting by myself. Being alone and being by yourself are different. Rumi was sitting somewhere alone one day when someone came, the man sat right next to Rumi. Then he said, perhaps you wanted to be alone. I'm sorry. No, no, my son, he said. Don't worry, I'm alone since you came. 
Sometimes this happens. Some people get alone when someone comes. Otherwise, he is in solitude with the beloved. It means he is alone. I went and sat alone. Oh, it's weird now. Tell the story of the great Rumi. Then come back and say I was sitting like him. I didn't mean that. Don't get me wrong. I was just sitting. But I wasn't alone because I had two problems, will and mind. An old man sits on the next table, a man with a beautiful face. That was the first time I saw him there. I hadn't seen him before. He looked at me and asked, Would you like some tea, my son? I said, Yes, sir. He has a beautiful face. There is a story in his face. Some people have a story on their face. Some people's faces are dull, colorless. They haven't lived much. They haven't seen much. They have no worries. They just came and passed through the world. But others came but haven't passed. They gave up the world but remained in the world. He's got that kind of story on his face. We sat down and he asked if I'd like a cup of tea. I said, yes, sir. Oh, two teas for us. Haji Or served two cups of tea. We're sitting. He took a sip of his tea. He said, one day a man rode his donkey. He set off on a long journey. During the journey, he saw streams, hills, vineyards, gardens. He said, so beautiful places. Who owns these? Someone said they belong to Ahmet Effendi. Wow, he must be a rich man. He went on for a while. Mansions, villages, fields, etc. Whose are these? Ahmet Effendi's. Whatever the man asked along the way, the answer was the same. Ahmed Effendi's. He was annoyed. Finally, he got off the donkey and gave it a kick. And said, let it be Ahmed Effendi's too. So the old man is telling me this story. I don't know why he's telling it. And he didn't even say, I'm going to tell you something. He just took a sip of his tea and began. But when the story was over, I felt as if I had been slapped. Let this donkey be Ahmet Effendi's too. This is something about getting rid of the mind. The man abandoned the mind. He said everything belongs to him, so let it be his possession too. I paid closer attention. He asked if I'd like another cup of tea. I said, yes, sir. Were two teas for us. The teas were served. He took a sip of his tea. He said two friends went on a trip together. They had to get on a ship. They could barely carry the load on their backs to the ship. They were tired. When they got on the ship, one of them put his luggage and he sat on it, a sigh of relief. He rested like this. But the other one is still holding the luggage on his back. His friend looked at him. He said, this ship can carry both you and your luggage. Why are you still carrying the burden on your shoulders after boarding the ship? Whoops. My second issue, the question of will. Now you might say that since you've been thinking about those issues, you might have seen those two stories as corresponding to mind and will. I don't know, maybe you're right. But at that moment, if there were two things on earth that could be told about my two issues, one of them was this and one of them was that. And he told them. I was surprised. He got up and left. I was sitting. Then I felt sleepy. I saw concrete benches over there. I slept there for two or three hours. That night I had a dream. I dreamt I was a painter, not a calligrapher, a painter. But I'm drawing a wow, the Arabic letter wow. This old man came and said, can you give it to me as a gift? I said, yes, sir, sure. I signed it and presented it to him. But I signed it as Haji Bayramveli. Either the next day or two days later, I saw the old man again. I went to him and said, Salam alaikum wa alaikum as salam. Those who know the Aaronler only after they've dreamt. We sat down. I said, Sir, I had such a dream. He cried. He cried a lot. It turned out that this person was a Malamati Caliph, Faik Baba. The letter Wow, I don't know what it means for him. And hearing that I signed it as Haji Bayram Veli, he cried. He was sad. When he passed away afterwards, May Allah have mercy on him. May Allah pour his mercy on him. Anyway, I've gone on too long. Uh, let's get to the story. One day a young man, this young man is a friend of mine, but I won't tell you who he is. He is in love. There's a girl he loves. The issue is not certain. He is confused. Will it be her? How wonderful it would be if it was her. 
I know people who fell in love and got married. They weren't very happy. I wonder if I should have a rational marriage or... He's confused. But he loves her very much, a lot. He's confused. But he loves her so much. He said, one day I went to Haji Wu's place. I sat down with this issue in my mind. Someone said, asked if he'd like to have a cup of tea. Just like in my story. He says, I turned around. I was all alone because I'm in love. Is a lover ever alone, guys? When the lover leaves the door, his longing enters. A lover is a man who can't be alone. He can't be alone when he's with his lover. And he can't be alone when he's by himself. Because the lover is always with the beloved. Anyway, he says, I went there and sat alone. An old man asked, would you like a cup of tea? I said, sure, I'd like that, sir. He says, we sat down. The old man said, oh, two teas for us. Or served the teas. He looked at me and started telling me a story. I didn't understand at first. Why is he telling me a story I couldn't understand? But I paid attention. I'm listening. He's a nice man to talk to. Here's the story. There was once a sultan. He had no children for many years. One day, by the way, may Allah grant a child to all those who don't have children. May Allah grant them righteous children. Well, I said the sultan didn't have a child. Maybe there's somebody listening who doesn't have a child. He or she said, well, just like us, for the sake of that longing, for the sake of that sigh, may Allah grant them children as well. May Allah grant them good children. So, the sultan had a child after many years, a beautiful girl. Drums were beaten, dances were performed, a celebration was organized, and banquet tables were set up because the sultan had a daughter. The people love the sultan. They are happy that the sultan's wish has been fulfilled. Years passed and the girl has grown up. Now she's old enough to get married. Well, the husband of the sultan's only daughter will be the heir apparent to the throne. That is why the mother sultan, the sultan and the palace officials are on a meticulous search. But they can't find someone who's just right for her. It's hard to get the only daughter of a house. Let me put it in parentheses. It's hard. Because they put so much hope in her. Anyway, one day the Sultan went out in disguise. He's checking out the locals. He visited the bazaar, school, madrasa, etc. Then he saw an old man on the bank of a river. The old man was taking stones from the river, tying them together with a rope and throwing them into the river by saying something. It caught the Sultan's attention. The man is doing it over and over again. There's a good word in Turkish, mutamadiyan. It has a meaning beyond continuity. It's a good word, just a little secret. Anyways, he ties the stones together and throws them. Sultan asked, what are you doing? He said, son, I'm tying the destinies together. Ha ha, the Sultan laughed. I've never heard of such a thing. How do you do it? He said, I take, tie and throw them. Sultan asked, Whose fate did you just throw? Oh, that were the destinies of the Sultan's daughter and his dark-skinned servant, Ahmed. I tied them up and threw them away. The Sultan was stunned. His daughter and servant Ahmed. He pictured the two for a moment, tying the destinies. It doesn't sound possible, but... Servant Ahmed and his daughter. He didn't say yes to the Sultans and said no to the princes. He was annoyed. He said goodbye and came back to the palace. On the way, he's trying to convince himself. He thinks, no way, it's impossible, but he still doubts. Shakespeare, Othello, Iago, Iago, bad guy. I don't like him. He made Othello strangle Desdemona, that pure and loyal lover, with his own hands. Oh, what a pity, cruel man. And he's so in love with her that he strangles her to death with a pillow to preserve her beauty. Oh, my dear, whatever. The Sultan arrived. He can't get rid of his doubt. He says, impossible. There is no such thing as tying destinies. Just because an old man ties two stones together and throws them into the river, two people's destinies will not come together. But what if it happens? He couldn't sleep until the morning. He finally found a solution. He called his servant, Ahmed. Come here, Ahmed. Yes, my Sultan. He wrote a letter. Take this letter, give it to the son. Pardon me, your majesty. I said, give this letter to the son. The servant couldn't understand. I mean, how can he give the letter to the son? But it's the Sultan's order. He said, yes, my Sultan, 
and took the letter. The Sultan patted him on the back and said, Look, I trust you very much. Don't neglect your duty. And don't come back without giving this letter to the son, even if it costs you your life. Ahmed said, Yes, my Sultan. Servant Ahmed put the letter in his bosom and set off. On the way, the poor man was worried. That's how the old man tells it. Meanwhile, Haji Ur served the second round of tea. Our guy listens in curiosity, because there is love in the story. As in the quote, one who is not a jeweler doesn't know the value of jewels. Or another one, you can't make the passers-by come and buy if they are not customers. Don't try in vain, you can't pour the water of the truth into a broken vessel. And Rumi says, as the thirsty go from mountain to mountain in search of water, so water goes from mountain to mountain in search of the thirsty. If you are in pursuit of water, have a chapped lip due to thirst, my dear. No need to shout like, water, water. Let the crack of your lips scream. Servant Ahmed set off. How is he going to do this? He decided to walk towards the direction where the sun rises. Of course, the great sultan knew something, or he wouldn't have ordered him to give this letter to the sun. Ahmed walks, and the sun moves away. Ahmed walks, and the sun moves away. Days followed days, weeks chased weeks, months chased months, seasons chased seasons. Ahmed walked for three seasons. Is it possible to reach the sun? But he promised he will deliver that letter. Four seasons, five seasons, and at the end of the seventh season, Ahmed's hair and beard have grown long and he is miserable. He got thinner, his legs are weak, his face is covered with dust. He looked like a majzub. After that, he crossed a high hill and then he saw a beach below. And the sun is so beautifully reflected in the sea. From where Ahmed is, he can see the sun in the sea. With the last strength in his knees and the last mind in his head, Ahmed started running towards the sun. When he reached the sea, he stood up and threw himself into the water. He will give the letter to the sun. While Ahmed gives the letter to the sun in the sea, the Sultan asked his wife what to do to get his daughter married. She said, it's winter now. Let's wait for spring. Allah will open a door for us. Indeed, as spring comes, there is joy in the country. The Sultan is happy. He speaks to himself like, you see it, old man, tying the destinies and all. Servant Ahmed is not even here. Look, the Sultan of a faraway land has come and asked for my daughter's hand in marriage. Where are the tied stones? He is in a good mood. His daughter is getting married. Forty days and forty nights of celebration, drums, feasts and entertainment. On the last day of the wedding ceremonies, it is the evening of the fortieth day. The Sultan, the mother Sultan, their daughter and the groom are sitting together having dinner. The groom tells about his adventures. He's a wealthy man. He gave her a necklace. It is an unprecedented necklace, one of a kind. He's rich. He talks about how he became rich, about his country, his sultanate and so on. They listen with pleasure. The sultan is happy. At that moment, the groom somehow dropped his fork or his knife. I don't know. He bent down to pick up the fork from the ground. The sultan was attentive. When the groom's waist opened, the sultan saw that his waist was dark. His face, hands and feet are fair skinned, but his waist is dark. Why is it so? He tells himself to not doubt. It's not possible. Anyway, they got up from dinner, but the sultan is restless. He went to bed. Is this possible? The face of the old man who ties destinies appeared in front of his eyes again. Does he sound like Ahmed? No, no, he doesn't. How many seasons have passed since Ahmed left? God knows where he is. That's what he thinks. The sultan couldn't sleep again until the morning. In the morning, he saw the newlyweds walking around in the palace garden. The sultan approached behind them. I have an idea. Let me play a game with him. He came up behind them and shouted, Ahmed! And the groom turned around. The sultan is in shock. You are my servant. Your servant, Ahmed. Yes, your majesty. But how? What happened? How? The girl is confused. 
The Sultan can't speak. Ahmed is embarrassed. The Sultan said, come on, tell me the truth. Ahmed told the whole story. He said, my Sultan, after I left with the letter, I walked everywhere day and night. Then I came to the top of a high hill. Below it is the sea. The sun is in the sea. I ran and threw myself into the water. And there were chests, treasures, this and that. Such a strange place. At first I thought I was dead. When I came out of the water, I was a fair-skinned person. Only because I had wrapped the sash around my waist tightly, the color of my old skin there remained as dark. But the rest bleached like this. I turned white. I don't know if it was the water, the sun, or the letter. Then I took those treasures out of there. I took them. There was also a letter in those chests, Your Majesty. I took it because I thought it was a letter in return for your letter. The Sultan was surprised. Where is that letter? I have it with me, Your Majesty. It's always with me. He took it out and he hadn't opened it before. The old man keeps telling the story. Our guy is all ears, thinking, is it about my issue or not? Where will it end up, etc. By the way, two more cups of tea have been served. They are drinking. Ahmed took out the letter and handed it to the Sultan. The Sultan quickly opened the letter and saw only one sentence. You cannot write to the sun, nor can you erase what has been written. The Sultan collapsed on the floor. Did Ahmed and Sultan's daughter live happily ever after? What did the Sultan say about it? What about the old man who tied the stones? We have no idea about those. My friend said, brother, when I heard the story, I figured it out. It means that who I will marry and how I will marry have been predestined from the pre-eternity. Whether I think too much or not at all, in the end I will walk towards the ordained place. Love will be an excuse, logic will be an excuse, but what is written will happen. He said I was so happy to realize this. I ordered two more teas. Haji Ur served the teas, but I turned my head and the old man was gone. He told the story and left. I wish he'd say goodbye. Then I asked Haji Ur, Brother, where did this old man go? Haji Ur asked, What old man? You've been sitting here alone for an hour. He says, I lost my tongue. Assalamu alaikum Erenler. Those who have given their hearts to Erenler, those who see the Erenler with their heart's eyes, and those who know that there is more to Erenler than meets the eye. Alas and alak. Ayyallah. Zera Group presented Biri Birgün.